Hi everybody, Sean McGinnis with YouStudiedWhat.com and I'm here this afternoon with Emily Sandberg. Hi Emily. Hi Sean. How are you? <laughs> Couldn't be better. <laughs> <laughs> We've been running around it's trying to catch... holiday season. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I'm running around like crazy uh, wrapping gifts, so it's good. <laughs> It's good. So we've been running around trying to catch up with each other for a couple of days now, and um, I really appreciate you being here with us. I, and um, I'm really looking forward to getting to know you a little bit better. You and I have, you know, talked online forever, it seems. Yeah. But we've never actually met or chatted in person or otherwise, and so this is the first time we've actually had a chance to, to say hello to each other, which is pretty cool. It's an amazing thing about social media, isn't it, that you can really intimately get to know somebody without ever picking up a phone or shaking a hand now. So cool. I love it. I love it. So yeah. um, you know what the story is here at, at You Studied What. I just, you know, I'm really interested in exploring a little bit um, what you studied in college and what you're doing today. So let's just get right into it. I mean, tell me about um, where did you go to school and what did you study and how did you wind up in that um, in that area of study? Okay. Um, briefly, my mom, um, education for her was really important. She, I was the second oldest of seven kids. She ended up homeschooling all of us at certain parts of our um, education. I personally was homeschooled until the fourth grade. Okay. Um, and then in high school, uh, I took two years of high school and went to college okay. on state tuition. Um, I quickly found out that college was not uh, the place for me. Um, I enjoyed it, but um, I couldn't wait to get home and, and read books and you know crawl into bed and and do my own my own self study. So um, what I ended up doing was um, an opportunity came along for me to model, um, and so I took a year off to model to get money to go back to to go back to college. Okay. Um, and then that just it never happened. I never went back. I've <laughs> I've considered. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've considered going back, but uh, um, I ended up just continuing along the path of the school of, of, of hard knocks. I So I modeled for five years solid, um, got a ton of uh, life experience, education doing that. Um, right. And then I, um, and then I, and then afterwards when I stopped modeling full time, um, I went into therapy like full time. So that's where I began my like inner journeys of into the therapy world and in you know I did a lot of like different types of experiential and equine and and group therapy and individual and couples and I just ate that up for a good four or five years right um, and that sort of opened the door to what I'm doing now which is um, I work at a, a rehab center here in Nashville Tennessee and I do admission counseling there and I love it absolutely love it um, I don't know if that's a too long of an answer for you, or <laughs> not at all. I think it's a, it's a great start. So tell me a little bit. Uh, when you were in school, what were you studying? I was going for a general. Um, I was doing a lot of general classes, and okay. what I would do is I would go down to the career counseling center, and I would find a career that I thought I might be interested in. For instance, architecture. So okay. then I would go and I would do a graphics class or I would do um, a mathematics class or whatever entry level courses needed to be um, needed for me to be had to to do that and then I would find out if I really had the passion to you know commit and follow through. Um, ten times out of ten, I did not. <laughs> I love it. Uh, <laughs> so, but I read all. I read. <laughs> I love. I'm really um, a big believer in the school of uh, of, of, of reading uh, reading books, um, and I'm a big fan of the Khan Academy. <laughs> ah, yeah. We've um, we've we're a big fans of the Khan Academy around our place too. Yeah, for, especially for the kids. But so, um, what what was the first experience you remember that led you into um, looking deeper at therapy and, and it, was it an event, was it a person, was it a book, was it a movie, um, can you trace it back to any one specific thing? Yeah, I had, I was dating, um, I was dating a man and he had suggested, he had seen that I was really struggling um, just holding any kind of boundary with my agents and modeling 
and okay. he suggested that I perhaps maybe go see a therapist. Okay. Um, and that's where that's where it started for me. And then I just kept I just kept digging deeper and deeper and deeper into that world. Um, I started studying a lot of Joseph Campbell um, and uh, Young, of course, and and uh, and I just ate it up. Um, I really find that my style of learning is a lot of one-on-one -on -one interaction. Okay. Much like how it took us two minutes for you to show me how to get onto a Google Hangout and set up my little name at the bottom and set up, right. you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it, we did it in two minutes. I don't have to go. I, I didn't have to go and, and and sit in a class and and listen to a teacher lecture me on the importance of <clears throat> of why would I put Supermodel Central underneath my name? Right. You know. Oh, which is another thing that I'm doing now. Yeah. So tell me about that. Yeah, so after, after modeling for five years and my um, experience, um, the years that I've spent sort of recovering from it, um, I'm really passionate about giving back to the modeling industry. And the past couple years, I started a blog about a year ago. Um, I think for me it was a way of vocalizing and telling my story in a manageable way. I didn't have to like write a book or try to get people to pay attention. I could just put it out there and whoever listened, listened. Right. Um, and in doing so, I've started to receive a lot of feedback from girls and I've reconnected with some of the old girls in the industry and I've, I'm starting to find a lot of really cool avenues of how to help um, structure uh, the modeling business in a way that's going to benefit not only the girls that are in it, but the the women, the young girls, the men, the advertising world, the people that are exposed to these images that they see every day. So currently I am um, doing a bit of a fundraiser and um, laying the foundation to build this platform for supermodelcentral.com. It'll be all things supermodel. Very cool. That sounds community. awesome. Yeah. That sounds <laughs> awesome. what I do naturally. I build... I connect with people, I build communities, I say, I listen, I say, tell me what's going on with you, and I do my best to be honest and tell them what's going on with me, and then I, I like to um, create tools to help people uh, problem solve. So. Awesome. So um, back to the, the therapy for just a second. You know, there's a huge difference between um, being in therapy and suddenly deciding that's going to be your career going forward. Was there a, a precipitating event associated with that as well? Yeah, I moved to um, I moved to Tennessee. I moved to Nashville. Um, prior to that, I had been living in New York and Los Angeles. I'd been bouncing, you know, back and forth, which are two very um, entertainment-heavy industries. So I was um, constantly um, navigating work, the work that I had been doing, whether it was modeling, acting, commercial work. You know, I I couldn't get away from that. Right. Um, but moving to Nashville, uh, we moved here a year ago, and that afforded me the opportunity to jump into, to start jumping into and exploring other things that I wasn't able to get distance. I needed the physical distance, right. I found out, to be able to do that. And also, it was nice to have the anonymity of not um, having my identity, so my identity with within my community, within those cities, tied to the fact that I'm a model, I'm a, I'm a, I do acting, I do this, I do that, you know, all mm -hmm. of a sudden I could step back and recreate a new community and a new identity, and it just, it felt safer, and it felt like the time was right for me. Awesome. Yeah. So, um, one of the things I always like to ask is, do you have any advice for would-be students or people that are interested in either in therapy or in getting into therapy as a career or um, yeah, students in general? Absolutely. I have two things of advice. One is, and this is something that I'm doing right now, while I'm at work, um, I'm currently pursuing my LADAC, which is a licensed alcohol and drug counselor. Okay. Um, and I can do that while I'm working. Mm -hmm. And various, um, various places will offer um, those uh, types of support. Mm-hmm. In education, um, so I would definitely suggest 
uh, once you have a degree or once you're ready to actually enter the field to find places and find a place that you want to work that that and find out what kinds of support that they offer okay. in sense of continued schooling Got or it. paying for schooling. I mean, the, the the place I work will pay for schooling, but somebody that's like re graduating from high school going into college, man, I gotta tell you. Those two, <laughs> those two years that I spent in college, instead of going to high school and going to college instead, um, that uh, I took it. I think most of the states now offer that program, and I'm not mm -hmm. sure what it's called. But if you can and if you are eligible for it, definitely, definitely get involved in doing it. Um, and I also suggest take a couple years off if you don't know what you're doing. Just take some time off and travel and see the world and jump out of a lot of um, a lot jump out of the mindset that we were raised in you know a lot of us come our parents and our societies and our communities that we grow up in sort of set us on a track of what's safe mm -hmm. you know and, and 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 if we stay along that path we think that we're gonna be safe and then we get to our mid 40s and realize <laughs> we're really unhappy and <laughs> Mid I'm not talking to you, pretty, pretty soon in the in the rearview mirror there. Holy cow! But uh, you know, so I say like, and what a better time to just jump off that track yeah. that everybody's been telling you that you're supposed to do and mess everything up and yeah. then uh, break it and right yeah. back together. I mean, there's nothing wrong with going back to school when you're 29 and graduating when you're 32. It's still today so young. You right. Know? <laughs> Isn't I didn't think truth? I, it was young then, and but now I can see it's totally young and and and, and worth it. It's worth it to 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 invest if you're going to invest that kind of money and that kind of time. Invest in something that you're actually passionate about. Right. You know. Well, listen. Thank you very much for being with us this afternoon. It's been great to get to know you and to meet you for the first time and to hear your story. I really appreciate it, and um, I look forward to doing it again soon. Me too. Thank you for having me on. Thanks, Emily. Bye.